Hello. So today I thought I would read a little bit more from uh, Christianity and Auto Suggestion by C. Harry Brooks and Ernest Charles. Um, this book, as I mentioned last uh, car video, is, uh, you know, just really fascinating. It's a masterpiece, in my opinion, and it's an incredibly um, underrated book that you really just don't hear anybody speak about. Um, which in a way is not surprising because you don't really even hear that many people, at least in these mainstream manifesting law of, law of attraction circles, speak about Emil Coué. So if they aren't speaking about Coué and I have a suggestion, they're probably not going to speak about this book. But what is very interesting about this book, one of many things that's interesting about this book, is that Brooks and Charles kind of draw direct parallels between the almost secular approach that Kue advocates, um, you know, when he's talking about using your imagination. They draw parallels with that, to that, with that, to, um, to the teachings of Christ, which of course is really the backbone of most new thought law of attraction teachings that are more popular than what we hear, uh, than, than the Kue stuff we hear about. And often are a lot more confusing. And what's so nice about this book is that these direct parallels are made between auto-suggestion and these more, you know, Christian-sounding, new thought, manifesting concepts. One of those concepts, and a concept that is is something that's not appreciated enough, is how, you know, the idea of like, you know, not my will be done, but thy will. My father's will, God's will be done. This ties in very nicely with Kuei's idea or concept of the law of reversed effort, which basically states that, you know, your your own personal willpower is always overridden by your imagination. In other words, your willpower does something. It just doesn't nearly have the strength of your imagination. So you can have the willpower to, to want to do something, but if your imagination says that's not going to happen, it's not going to happen. Another way to look at that is to say, well, I personally, you know, Tim, Tim wants to do something. But if, if God doesn't want to make it so, it won't happen. If my imagination won't make it so, it won't happen. Because imagination, the way Kue describes it, is very similar to the way we look at God or the Father in a lot of this Christian New Thought um, approach to the Law of Attraction. This is another reason, just this, this is just an aside, why like, you know, people are like, oh, you know, Neville talks about the Bible so, you know, provocatively, so interestingly. Of course he does. And his interpretations are fascinating. I love them. But so many of these New Thought teachings have really interesting interpretations of the Bible. It's not just like Neville has this unique take on it. He's got a unique take that's his own. But there's all these other idiosyncratic, very interesting takes on uh, both the Old and New Testament throughout New Thought teaching. Um, so in Christianity Not a Suggestion, Brooks and Charles write, For the negation of will, which Christ teaches, is a means of acquiring greater power and energy than the personal will can ever provide. We are to discard our weak personal wills, the discordant impulses of the ego, in order to set our lives in harmony with the omnipotent being, so that we may attain to a strength far beyond our individual capacity. In our relation to the material universe, we are constantly adapting our own wills to the laws of nature. We have been able to utilize immense natural powers such as steam and electricity because we have been willing to act in obedience to the laws by which these forces operate. In the mental and spiritual realms, we encounter the same necessity. If a man attempted to force an electric current to obey his will, to transgress the laws by which it is governed and submit to his personal desire, either he would obtain from it no force or it would destroy him. So if we would utilize healthfully the power which God gives us through faith, we must obey the laws which govern that power. 
We must subdue our personal will to the divine and allow the divine power free action in our lives. If on the contrary, we presume to utilize God for our own ends, to subdue his will to ours and his and use his power in opposition to his will, either we shall be reduced by inward conflict to a state of impotence, or we shall become monsters of soul-destroying egotism. By yielding our will to God, we live in harmony with the divine personality, and our, our will, flowing in the current of the divine will, reaches for the first time its full stature. The purely personal will can only rely upon itself. It therefore prevents the working of faith. A man has none but his own resources to fall back on, the small strength of his body, the little powers of his mind. Therefore, his faith cannot go far before it is brought up sharply by the reason, Who am I? He is bound to ask, to attempt the working of wonders. I know I have common sense in a sound constitution, but this matter of removing mountains is fantastic. How can I presume to heal the sick when Smith, a better man than I, makes no attempt at such achievements? The exercise of the personal will, the ego powers, reduces us to our own mean stature, strips us of the godlike nimbus, reduces us to futility. But the assumption of God's will by faith inspires us with the knowledge that nothing is impossible, gives us the means of drawing on the universal source of transcending ourselves. Therefore, Christ exhorted the, the disciplines to live the power of God and not in their own strength. Be not anxious for the morrow. Rely not on your own effort, but on God's power. Ask and it shall be given, not struggle, and the strongest shall take for himself. All this would seem at first sight to have little to do with any theory of mental healing, but we find that the crux and storm center of Kuei's theory is precisely his attitude towards the will. This is expressed in his well-known law of reversed effort, which runs as follows. When the will and the imagination are antagonistic, it is always the imagination which wins without any exception. In the conflict between the will and the imagination, the force of the imagination is in direct ratio to the square of the will. The mathematical terms, of course, are merely metaphorical. So there you have it. I mean, if you're familiar with Kue and you know what we talk about on this channel, this, this should not seem shocking, but it's good to clarify. And it shows once again that even though Kue is using these you know, rather secular terms, like when he uses imagination, he's talking about this immense storehouse of power within, which is not a personal power as much as it's a transcendent power that allows us to seemingly overcome our own uh, faults and our own personal difficulties. It helps us transcend our ego and to accomplish great things, not just for ourselves, but for everybody, if we're able to actualize our imagination in the way the Kue says. And, you know, a Christian would say that's just the, the work of God. That's God. You know, the power of God moving through you. This is very different than um, you know, kind of like a, a personal egotistical, I manifested that, I manifested that, I manifested that approach to the law of attraction, which we see um, all too often on YouTube and elsewhere. You know, where it's very much like, I'm a, I'm a master manifester. You know, most of these teachers that we talk about, these great LOA type of teachers they almost all say, you know, my job is to get out of the way. You know, Joe Goldsmith always writes about how, you know, you have to actualize nothingness. That's how miracles happen. He goes, it's foolish to say I did that. That seems crazy. The miracle happens when we're not there. That's God doing it. That's your imagination doing it. Your imagination transcends your personal egotistical self in that way. So, you know, that clarifies why spiritual bypassing is so common in this community and why it's an incorrect uh, usage of these wonderful law of attraction, new thought principles, and why it's a, you know, a misapplication of what Kuwait talked about, obviously, in regards to using auto-suggestion consciously to improve our lives and improve the lives of others help others improve their lives. So, 
yeah, I hope that was helpful. And again, Christianity and Auto Suggestion, if you're into Kuwait, if you're into these ideas in general, is certainly worth uh, taking a look at. If you have questions or if you'd like coaching, I can be reached at radicalcounselor.com.